A warning from experts. The wet weather we've been having this spring is sure to bring a very active tick season this summer. Good evening, I'm Pat Callahan. And I'm Cindy Williams. That word comes as more research is confirming that an army of deer ticks, which may be carrying Lyme disease, is continuing to advance into western and northern Maine. The data also show for the first time that deer ticks are surviving despite harsh conditions this winter in Aroostook County. New Center Vivian Lee is here now to explain what this means for people and their pets who spend a lot of time outdoors. I don't know about you guys, but a lot of us have been thinking that a cold winter with a lot of snow like Aroostook County got this past winter would kill off any of the ticks left in the woods. But experts say even under more than 140 inches of snow, the deer ticks simply hibernated, and it's only a matter of time before they're in every corner of the state. Meanwhile, thousands of Mainers are living under a fell sense of security, thinking there's no chance they'll be bitten by a deer tick. Sarah Brooks grew up going to her family's camp in Charleston, about 30 miles northwest of Bangor. Now she takes her six-year-old son, Jordan, who loves the outdoors. He gets right down and he digs. After a recent visit, she got a call from her son's teacher. Jordan's ear was red and he said it hurt. Initially, she says his teacher thought it was a bug bite. I went to wipe it off, but she says, and I didn't expect it to wave back at me. Jordan's teacher managed to pull out most of the deer tick, but the head was embedded in his ear. Jordan received antibiotics to kill the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. But for Sarah, who hadn't done a tick check on herself or her son, it was a serious wake-up call. I wasn't as vigilant either because I thought the ticks were dying over the winter. New research is confirming just the opposite. Deer ticks can use snow as a blanket to survive very cold temperatures, even buried under a dozen feet of snow, which fell in far northern Maine. The ticks are able to survive well in Presque Isle. Um, which um, might be surprising since we, um, yeah, we don't have very good data of whether or not they're there. Volk is tracking tick migration in southern, western, and northern parts of the state. And ticks are larvae, the nymphs, and adults, so it's their second life stage. She shows us these tick so nymphs, which look like moving poppy like seeds. Them. They're placed in a bottle inside tick traps. The traps were buried in the ground from last fall until this April. Some of the vials were under leaves, others were exposed. More than 90% of the ticks under leaf cover survived at locations no. in Cape Elizabeth, near Millinocket, and Presque Isle while only 3% of the ticks without any insulation in the traps lived. The data is vital in helping pinpoint where ticks are heading, especially in areas that are still reporting low cases of Lyme disease. According to the Maine CDC, Aroostook County had four cases of Lyme in 2018 and Piscataquis three cases. Cumberland County had the highest number of cases with 286. The agency says there were more than 1,400 confirmed and probable cases of Lyme in Maine for that year. Volk hopes to compile the data into a map tracking deer migration throughout the state. The map will also include the locations of ticks carrying bacteria that causes Lyme and other tick-borne illnesses. She will collect and test ticks this summer from southern, western, and northern Maine. We're gonna test them for Borrelia, which causes Lyme, um, anaplasma, which causes anaplasmosis, and then Babesia, which causes Babesiosis. A couple miles up this road. Game Warden Joe Lefebvre patrols Knox and Lincoln counties for the Maine Warden Service, but he never goes into the woods without protective clothing. This camouflage suit is pre-treated with permethrin. The pesticide is able to incapacitate ticks or cause them to fall off the fabric. I have not been bitten since wearing this. Over the years, he has watched more deer ticks advance from the coast and southern Maine. Be more and more, um, they started progressing north. Seems like five miles, about five miles every year, I noticed I'd take my uniform off and I'd dig out all the ones that were embedded. I'd find them in my armpits, on my back. I'd, sometimes I'd bring 20 of these home a day. Lefebvre was treated with antibiotics shortly after experiencing pain and a rash from a tick bite, but he ended up being diagnosed with chronic Lyme two years later. I couldn't walk 100 yards. I was a mess. I would have to sit down and uh, recover and then go a little bit further. My brain fog was horrible. Lefebvre is still receiving treatment, which he says saved his life, but he still suffers from the effects of Lyme disease. The Maine Warden Service provides gear treated with permethrin to all game wardens and prompt medical attention after reporting a tick bite. Every day is about survival. In the meantime, Jordan has not experienced any medical problems related to the tick bite. Sarah and her family now wear protective clothing and do tick checks. 
She says Volk's research will be a valuable tool in helping her family protect themselves against Lyme disease. It's very scary to me and I definitely don't want my six-year-old you know, to have to go through a lifetime of dealing with the side effects of Lyme disease. If we had a map we could follow where the ticks are migrating or where there's a large outbreak of them, that would be very helpful because we, you know, we're outside, we do camping, four-wheeling. Scientists believe that, tear, believe that tear migration and climate change are playing a role in why ticks are migrating and Volk also hopes to use the data and post information about tick activity and diseases that they carry on signs at all the state parks throughout Maine. And coming up on 207, Chuck Lobelsic, a field biologist with the Maine Medical Center Research Institute, talks about what repellents should be used to protect against ticks and we'll have all that on our website and mobile app. Really great information, especially right now. It's so disappointing to hear how resilient the ticks are. Yes. You can't get a break. Well, you know yeah. what I've been calling them, nuclear, so <laughs> there you go. I don't yeah. know. That's all right, good. thanks guys. Thank you.